and I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. You may be seated. Trying to keep with your theme, I believe I'll go back home. I just want to use as a subject that when I get back home, and before I get back home, God has to clean up our mess. I want to know if there's anybody in the house that God has had to clean up some mess that you made. I just, I just wonder. Uh, maybe I'm the only one. You used to create a myth. Uh, I, I know the part of the son uh, left home like young folk who think that they know it all and ended up in a hog pen and created a myth out of his life. Because Pastor Ellison or what Adam did in the garden. We carry this sin problem. Matter of fact, Romans, Paul says in Romans 3.23, for all, not y'all, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter Anderson, you know we will sin. Yeah, 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 yeah we will disobey. Yeah. Anybody in here who has not sinned? I don't see no hands. We will mess up. And you know somebody in here need to take your halo off. Some, somebody needs to take your wings off. Nobody is immune to sin or to messing up or creating a mess. We use the word mess because it indicates a negative. It indicates trouble. That something is wrong. We, in the, we use the word mess because that's what happened when I went to cook the other day. I made a mess in my kitchen. And I had to put the mess in the garbage. And the garbage man doesn't come until Thursday to take away my mess. So we need somebody sometime to take away our mess. We use the word mess because it, it fits certain things on certain occasions. We, we see somebody who's drunk and we say he's messed up. I need to get on your street. When, when a man messed over a woman, there's a woman wrong. We say he messed over her. He been in my sermon. Or uh -oh, when a woman misused a man, we say she messed over him. I don't, I don't see anybody standing up to that me. Somebody, some people, I gotta get on your street now. Some people we just simply call messy. Anybody know the messy people? Anybody know some people we call messy? Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 describe some messy people. A person with a lying tongue is a messy person. 
person with a wicked heart is a messy person. A person whose feet run to do evil, that's a messy person. A person who spreads strife in the church, that's a messy person. Wherever they go, they will create some mess. In the neighborhood, move on a new street, create some mess. Get, get in the choir. I know it doesn't happen in Mount Holly, but create some mess. <laughs> get on a deacon board, create some mess. And then, Pastor Hunter, you, you own it. We got some messy deacons, but you own it. We got some messy preachers. That's a dangerous preacher. He'll tear up somebody else's church. Preachers always say, whenever there's trouble in the church, that I remember been talking to somebody else preaching. That's a mess of preaching. Uh, I want to remind you today that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The payment has already been made. So, so Jesus came to make the payment on our behalf. Because God is a just God. How many of you know that God is a just God? So justice for my sins, for my mess, justice had to be done. Romans 5 and 1 says that, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So on Calvary, on Calvary, he had to take care of our sin problem, our mess problem. And all of us know we're saved by grace, through faith, not by work. So we are saved from the power of sin. We are saved from the presence of sin. And we are saved from the penalty of sin. And you do know that sin has power. You know, David would tell you that sin has power. And something drove him to mess with you, eyes wide. Matter of fact, Bill Clinton would tell you that sin got power. Something drove him to mess up in the over office. And some of us can tell you that sin got power. We won't confess in church, but we can tell you that sin has made us do some things we shouldn't have done. Sin has power. And then, then sin has presence right now. Sin is going on. Sin is all around us. Paul says that every time I desire, y'all know what I'm talking about, to do good, evil, is always present. Sometimes when I'm driving down the street and somebody cut me off, you know, the old man want me to speak in tongues. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And some of us, instead of speaking in tongues, we use one of the American Sign Languages. I guess I'm reaching somebody. Y'all yeah. know what sign language I'm talking about. Right? And then we're saved from the penalty of sin. Because the wages of sin is death. Somebody had to pay. Somebody had to die. You know, some blood had to be shed. Thanks be to God that Jesus went to Calvary and took my place. And, and, and we are repeat offenders. 
in the court system, three strikes and you out. You know, if, if that applied to a Christian, I would have been out long time ago. Because we'll repeat offenders. You know, Lord, forgive me for this. Don't, don't let me do this anymore. Then I find myself doing it all over again. I used to talk about how uh, I would count, you know, how many times that, that I'd sinned. Because I know seven times, seven, seven, and I, I would count 400 and so many times. I would count the number of times I had sinned. And then I realized I had sinned more than that. And if we think about it, and we multiply, we'll find out we've sinned more than the number. We mess up, and God forgives us. We mess up again, and God still forgives us. We re sin, and God forgives us. But God warns us in Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In other words, some of us, when we get ready to sin, you say, Lord, you, you know I'm human. Lord, yeah, Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know I'm flesh. And Lord, if, if you'll forgive me this time, you know, I, I won't do it anymore. I'm on my way. You know, we, we, we pray a prayer before we commit to sin. You know, so Romans 6 and 1 say, shall we continue to sin? Because we know he died. We don't try to take advantage of what he did on Calvary. We, we, he didn't die for that. He explained we have been buried with him through baptism into his death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through God's glory that we too may walk in the newness of life just as he was buried we are crucified with Christ nevertheless we live but scripture says not I but Christ lived when you clean up your mess, we don't mean for us to mess up again. We have done some things. First John 1 and 6, 1 and 8 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Jesus had to clean up some of our men. You got into long time ago. Let me pram somebody. You don't mind me pramming you, do you? I know we've come back home and to celebrate homecoming, but let me pram you a little bit. You did some things that you ought to be in jail. He cleaned up that man. You drunk some stuff. They were making the elephant fall over. God cleaned up. That man. You drove home that night. Don't know how you got in your driveway. God cleaned up. That man. It's a secret. But you woke up. Place that you shouldn't have been in. God cleaned up that man. You, 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 you woke up in somebody else's house. God cleaned up that mess. You with somebody else's wife. God cleaned up that mess. You with somebody else's husband. God cleaned up that mess. Your mama didn't find out about it. But he cleaned up that mess about your daddy. You messed up with the boss. God cleaned up that mess. You did some stuff that if the FBI found out about. God cleaned up that mess. You did some stuff at the church. And God cleaned up that mess. God is a problem. He cleans up messy lives. You see, my brothers and my sisters, God knows how to clean up our mess. That's 
that's what happened to the prodigal son. God had to clean up his mess. Thought he was grown and left home. He ended up in a hog pen. And when he came to himself, he said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back home and tell my daddy that I messed up. And on his way home, his daddy looked out and saw it. Yeah. 